Psychedelics are some of the most powerful drugs known to alter human consciousness, but scientists have almost no idea of how they work. I am Dr. Lindsay Cameron, and I'm a neuroscientist that studies psychedelic medicine. I started my PhD back in 2016, before How to Change Your Mind came out and before this big psychedelic hype. There were a few clinical trials that had been published that showed that these drugs might have a therapeutic response in treatment-resistant depression. This was big. And what I wanted to know is how these drugs work. The prefrontal cortex is a part of the brain responsible for things like motivation, long-term planning, abstract thinking, and how to make a plan to achieve your goal. The prefrontal cortex extends projections down to other parts of the brain that are involved in emotion, and it modulates their activity according to whatever that goal is. Now in depression, what we see are that the cells, the brain cells in the prefrontal cortex, the neurons, are actually atrophied. So they're shriveled up and they have decreasing function. And this is where you get classic depression-like symptoms developing. Things like a lack of motivation, an inability to think clearly in order to achieve your goal. Testing psychedelics in clinical trials is very difficult to do because if I give you saline or if I give you LSD, you're going to know which one you got. So having a properly placebo controlled trial is very difficult. And for this reason, I use rodents in my research. Rodents don't have a preconceived notion that they are going to feel better after I give them some drug. Now, what happens when I give these rodents these drugs is I do see exactly that. They have increased motivation, decreased anhedonia. And when I look at their brains, what I actually see is it causes the neurons in the prefrontal cortex to grow. So those processes are being grow, that function is restored, and it's ameliorated all those deficits that depression caused in the first place. This is powerful. So what else is strengthening the prefrontal cortex good for? So it turns out that the prefrontal cortex may play a very strong role in addiction, and that by strengthening the prefrontal cortex, we may be able to decrease drug seeking. Addiction is a devastating disorder that affects not only the life of the person who suffers from it, but for the lives of the people around them, including their friends, their family, and the people they work with. There's no cure and there's a high rate of relapse and it affects millions of people worldwide. You may have heard of the opioid crisis. Opioids are highly addictive drugs that people have a very hard time getting off of. And this brings us back to psychedelics. Can we get these people to decrease their drug seeking by giving them something like psychedelics? Well, this is exactly what I'm studying. And again, I do this in mice. So what I've done is I've created a task in which I can give mice fentanyl, which is a highly addictive opioid. They have two levers available. And when they press a lever, they get a dose of fentanyl. They find that they like this a lot. So they learn this task quite quickly and they press the lever to get that fentanyl. And this is when we give an intervention. So we give some of them my saline and we give some of them my psilocybin. And what I found is that if you give a mouse psilocybin, it significantly decreases the amount of time that that animal looks for a drug. It decreases drug seeking. The next step of this project is the most interesting. So how does this work? What changes are being made in the brain that allows this therapeutic response to happen? Well, we can figure this out in four steps. So the first step is to look at how the brain physically changes in response to these drugs. So as I mentioned, the prefrontal cortex extends projections down to other regions of the brain involved in emotion, and it can modulate their activity. So what we can do is we can now look at those projections and we can look to see if there are more of them or if they're stronger. The second thing we can do is we can look at the cells in the prefrontal cortex and we can actually look to see if their activity has changed. And we can do this using a technique called patch clamp electrophysiology. To do this, we take a live brain slice with live cells and what we can do is we can put a glass pipette up to it 
and record its activity after we give drug. Has it gone up or has it gone down? This will help in modulating those subcortical regions. The third thing we can do is artificially reactivate the cells in the prefrontal cortex and see if that is sufficient for inducing this anti-addictive behavior. If it does, then that would suggest that the prefrontal cortex plays a very key role in the therapeutic action of psychedelics. And finally, what we can do is we can look at changes in gene expression. What we can do is we can take those cells in the prefrontal cortex and we can actually sequence their DNA and we can see what genes are upregulated and what are downregulated. And what this does is it allows us to see what genes may be responsible for the more long-term effects of these drugs. Why do these have therapeutic responses that are so long-lasting? In all, we can use these information in order to develop new therapeutics as well as optimize the current ones that we have. And we can make drugs that are available for everyone. Thank you so much for your time and for investing in the future of science.